Springfield Armory and SIG. I can't mention either one of those gun companies without 60 to 75 percent of the audience pooping their pants. And I get it. I get it. Uh, with SIG, they kind of earned a reputation as beta testing on their customers, especially after the SIG P365, whenever it was first introduced. It, there were some issues, some teething issues that affected a very small number of the guns, but of course it spread like wildfire on the internet and a lot of people are angry at SIG about that. With Springfield Armory, you have, I guess, some questionable political donations that were made over the years. And as I understand it, there's two sides to the story, but I really don't know, nor do I much care because I've never really been a Springfield Armory guy. So I don't own any, I've never had a desire to own one. I've reviewed them in the past and they've done well enough, but for me, it's kind of like, what's the point? In fact, I wasn't even going to do a review of the new Springfield Hellcat. And I guess Springfield is not TFB TV people because I, it, my copy, my review copy just showed up at my FFL one day, maybe like a week ago. So several weeks after all these other videos came out about the Springfield Hellcat, it just showed up and I was like, you know what? I've got a copy, may as well review it. But there's been like a hundred reviews out there. They all came out whenever the embargo lifted, which I think was like September 25. And so there's a lot of static out there because you guys absolutely freak out, which I get when a ton of reviews all come out in the same day. Everybody's automatically like, oh, shill, shill. Everybody's a, a shill. Are they paid for this to be released? No, they just have embargo dates. There's something called an embargo date where they say, hey, look, you're not allowed to talk about this gun until this date. That recently happened to me with the CMMG Banshee in 10 millimeter. I had previously done a pre-release review of the CMMG Banshee in nine millimeter, loved it. And then I got a copy of the CMMG Banshee in 10 millimeter. I was really thrilled about it, went, shot it, loved it. Then my video comes out the day the embargo lifts and it's like they sent a gun to everybody and their goddamn dog. So none of the reviews did all that well in terms of traffic and everybody thought that everyone who came out with a review was full of shit, which again, I get, but you have to remember that just because everybody's releasing a video on the same day, it doesn't mean that they're all BS. I did not get a pre-release copy of this gun and it's fair to assume that somebody who gets a pre-release copy of a gun has a pretty good relationship with the manufacturer. Sig, Glock, great examples. I usually get pre-release copies of those guns. I didn't get the Springfield until a couple weeks after, and I didn't get the Springfield Tug Job special influencer package or whatever that they were shipping out with these. So apparently I'm a second class citizen to Springfield, which is fine. So that said, I assume you guys are going to believe me when I say that this is probably the best gun that Springfield has ever made. So there's been review, review, review. You had all these guys with pre-release copies. They had positive reviews, a lot of good things to say about it. And I understand it now that I've handled one and shot one, I get it. These actually are pretty decent. So I'm gonna try to bring something original and that is you guys wanting to know what's better, the Sig P365 or the Hellcat because they're virtually similar. I mean, they're like double stack guns that are the size of single stack guns. Both of them at their widest point are about one inch thick. Both of them are about four inches tall. Both of them have about a three inch barrel. However, the difference is the Hellcat is 11 plus one with a flush fit magazine, while the Sig P365 is a 10 plus one with a flush fit magazine. But they are two different guns, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. So to give you guys a bias alert, I am a big SIG P365 guy. This is my SIG P365 that I carry every day. It's one of the earliest copies that came out. I've got over 2,000 rounds through it. Only one hang up, but that's because when I shot those 2,000 rounds, I didn't clean it. So I place my faith in this gun and I carry it on me almost every day, unless I'm carrying something else. I also have a SIG P365 XL, which is a slightly longer version of the SIG P365 with a 12 plus one flush fit capacity, and it's optics ready with a slightly longer barrel. And gosh, this gun shoots. And you see here, we have the Springfield Hellcat. Guys, this gun is dimensionally, they are almost 
identical. Again, you get an extra round out of the Springfield Hellcat versus the Sig P365, even though they're dimensionally almost identical. And guys, I was trying to find a way to say, well, hey, look, the P365 is a little bit smaller. I got out my caliper, I tested every single dimension, and these things are off by a few hundredths of an inch. So you're talking about a one round difference in guns that are functionally identical in terms of overall dimensions, but which one is better? Before I get into my impressions and analysis of the Hellcat, why don't we go over the specs with a little bit of comparison real quick. The Hellcat is of course a striker fired polymer frame semi-automatic 9mm handgun. It has a standard capacity of 11 plus 1 with a flush fit magazine. The Hellcat comes with the 11 round magazine and an extended 13 round magazine. Looking at the dimensions, I verified Springfield's measurements with my own caliper and scale. The Hellcat is pretty much exactly 4 inches tall, 6 inches long, and 1 inch thick at the grip. By comparison, the Sig P365 is 5.8 inches long, and it's 4 and a quarter inches tall at the tallest part of the grip towards the front, but only 3.8 inches tall at the bottom part of the back strap. The Sig P365 is also 1 inch thick at its thickest point, just like the Hellcat. Although the Sig is 0.2 inches shorter than the Hellcat, both guns have identical length 3 inch barrels. And surprisingly, the Sig P365 at 18.6 ounces with an empty magazine weighs half an ounce more than the 18.1 ounce Hellcat with an empty 11 round magazine. The Hellcat steel slide is melanited and it accommodates a dual captured recoil spring and a hammer forged 3 inch barrel. The barrel itself is also melanited. The standard sights are excellent on the Hellcat, albeit a little bit on the tall side. This is likely because the Optics Ready model will co-witness irons with some brands of micro red dot. While that's a great feature for the Optics Ready model, I wish the sights were a little bit lower on the standard model. The Hellcat features steel iron sights. It has a front night sight only, but the Hackathorn style blacked out rear U-notch sight is an excellent substitute for conventional three dot sights. The front sight is a bright neon yellow and very attention grabbing. It bears mentioning that the Sig P365 comes standard with three dot night sights front and rear, but the Hellcat sights are nonetheless outstanding. The slide has front and rear cocking serrations that are very aggressive with rear slide serrations that usefully wrap all the way around the slide including the top. The recoil spring assembly includes what's referred to as a standoff device, which means that the front end of the recoil rod is enlarged and lengthened slightly beyond the muzzle end of the slide. Theoretically, this would prevent the gun from going out of battery if the face of the slide came into contact with an object or a person. The trigger is a semi-flat trigger, with flat triggers being all the rage now. The standard SIG P365 comes with a curved trigger, while the new P365 XL comes with a flat trigger. I personally prefer the curved trigger, however there's no question that flat triggers are definitely popular. Trigger pull weight is about 6 pounds, which is generally the standard for self-defense guns like this. By contrast, the flat trigger on my relatively new Sig P365 XL weighs in at about 6 pounds and 4 ounces, and the curved trigger on my well-broken-in Sig P365 comes in at 5 pounds and 10 ounces. Importantly, the Hellcat is plus P ammunition rated, meaning that you can use the hotter plus P self-defense 9mm hollow points for carry. MSRP in the standard model is 569 and the optics ready version is 599. The Hellcat is manufactured in Croatia. As I said, I think this is the best gun that Springfield's made. They actually did an excellent job. First of all, ergonomically, I love this grip texture. I think they call it like adaptive grip texture. They have some kind of catchphrase for it, but the grip texture, it's almost like that skateboard tape, but not as aggressive. So when you think about the Smith & Wesson M&P 2.0 series, a lot of people complain that those grips were too sandpapery and were causing pilling on shirts or raw flesh. I think that this is a little bit less grippy on the Hellcat than the Smith & Wesson M&P 2.0. And in fact, it's similar to the Sig P365 texturing, which is good. They've got thumb ledges on either side. The controls are very close to the frame, but still usable. And they've got a little bit of fencing around the controls to prevent you from accidentally disengaging or engaging any of those controls. Magazine release works perfectly, and the mag comes out energetically. 
you've got this wraparound texture on the top for the slide serrations. Your rear slide serrations, it goes all the way around, which is kind of cool. And you've got forward slide serrations. It took a second for me to shoot the Hellcat accurately. The sights are really tall. As I mentioned, I believe that that's to accommodate the Optics Ready version. They probably have the same sights on the Optics Ready version and the standard version. So the sights are kind of tall. And then I wasn't really a huge fan of the trigger. It's not a bad trigger. And it actually has an excellent reset. Listen, boop, right there. So it's got an excellent reset, but it's just, you have your hit with all the trigger weight just at one point. Some people may like that. I did not. But once I got used to it, I could actually shoot this thing really well. Decent enough groups with the Hellcat at 10 yards with Federal Train and Protect. Train and Protect is a defensive hollow point that you can also use at the range. So this isn't soft stuff. So I was using defensive hollow points when I shot these two groups, a little bit more recoil impulse. You can see this first group actually had a, a tight little group here with a couple of flyers. I shot that first group with this flush fit magazine. The second group, much tighter, actually really, really good. And I shot that with the extended full grip 13 round magazine. So I'm sure that had something to do with how much tighter this group, I mean, this is an excellent group by any measure at 10 yards, especially for a subcompact handgun, but I also got used to the trigger a little bit more between shooting those that first group and that second group. Bunch of take up, as usual with most polymer striker fired pistols. Then you hit a hard wall, actually. There's no squish, there's no nothing. You hit a hard wall and then a break. So once I kind of got used to that and having that additional purchase from the pinky finger groove grip, I managed to make a lot tighter group. You can tell Springfield really thought hard about the design of this pistol because another feature that they have that's missing from the Sig P365 is a little speed ledge here, or what some people refer to as an accelerator cut. It's on both sides and it's dimpled in with a little bit of texture, it allows you to get a thumb, your support thumb in there, and it gives you great support whenever you're firing using your support hand. So it also has kind of this first finger groove, just like the P365. However, the P365 has a slightly broader and slightly more aggressive undercut that I think is a little bit more comfortable, but that isn't to say that the Hellcat isn't comfortable because this is an extraordinarily comfortable gun. They nailed the ergos with this thing. I mean, truly they did. You've got the melanided slide and barrel. Don't have to worry about rust. That's not an issue with the SIG P365 either with the nitron coating, which is similar. One thing that's neat about the Hellcat is it has a standard accessory rail compared to the SIG P365 that uses the proprietary accessory rail. So that's another point for the Hellcat. I'm not a big flat trigger guy. I like the curved trigger in the standard SIG P365, and I think that this is the best trigger out there for a striker-fired polymer-framed carry handgun. I think the SIG P365 is the best trigger out of the box, period, end of story. So guys, I guess the bottom line is these guns are basically the exact same dimensionally. You just get an additional round with the Hellcat, and that's pretty big. In fact, I think there are going to be a lot of people who are going to be carrying the Hellcat. As we sit here today, I've seen the SIG P365 as low as $450 street price, although most commonly it's about 500 bucks. You're looking at 569 for the standard model Hellcat and 599 MSRP for the optics ready version. Since these just came out, they're kind of selling around MSRP. But, I mean, it'd be no question, I would go with the SIG P365 if you're talking about a $100 difference between these guns. Who knows where the price is actually going to end up with the Hellcat after it's been on the market for a couple of months. So to wrap up what I guess is like a review of the Hellcat within this video, I've gotta say that, again, this is the best gun that I think Springfield has ever made. No dumb grip zone shit no safety, uh, grip safety in the back, no nonsense. This is just a well put together, well thought out gun with every possible feature that you might be able to think of included. They did everything correctly and there's nothing wrong with this gun unless to you, 
being Springfield is just being wrong. This is from a guy who admits that he's not a Springfield guy. And that's also why I'm still going to carry my Sig P365. I know that's going to piss everybody off because there are going to be people out there saying, James, clearly your bias is showing because you're a Sig guy. You like Sig. You like their guns. You like them as a company. And I like Springfield. I, I think that they're a bunch of really nice people. But I am a Sig guy through and through. And you can call it bias if you want. But for me, I look at everything about the SIG P365 and it works. So hear me out and I'll try to objectively explain to you why I'm a SIG P365 guy instead of the Hellcat. First of all, on the standard P365, the biggest point is that I like the trigger better than anything else that's out there. As I said earlier in the video, I think that this is the best out of the box striker fired trigger that there is. I've got the SIG P320XC, which is vaunted for its excellent trigger. I don't think it's as good as the SIG P365. I like the curved trigger in the 365 versus the 320XC trigger. And it also has a little bit springier feedback for the return whenever your, your trigger's returning for your trigger follow through. The 365 kind of pushes you there, whereas the 320, it feels almost like you're allowing the, the trigger to come back out. So it's a very responsive trigger in the SIG P365 that makes for good follow-up shots. I think that the Hellcat has a great trigger and I think that there are people out there who will believe that the Hellcat trigger is better than the SIG P365. But at this point, I think I've made it clear that I'm talking about my own personal opinion and why I'm carrying the 365 as opposed to the Hellcat. And that's because the main reason being, I like the SIG P365 trigger. I guess a co-main reason is dependability. I know a lot of people are gonna laugh when you say that in the context of the SIG P365 because this gun did have some issues whenever it first came out in a very, very small minority of the guns. I think it was like less than half a percent or something like that. So I have the, the statement from SIG on my SIG 2000 round like quasi torture test video that I did with this exact gun. And that video is part of the reason why I am going to continue to carry this gun because I've got over 2000 rounds down the pipe of this thing and it still looks brand new. I had one failure through that entire 2000 rounds and that's because I didn't clean the gun for 18 months after about 1500 rounds. So it finally had one failure, which is to be expected and I think pretty good. The ergonomics, the controls, I think are just as good on the SIG P365 as the Hellcat. Same thing with the undercut, the grip, the texture. You've got the forward slide serrations, very aggressive rear slide serrations. You've got the nitron barrel and slide. So this gun's gonna be virtually rust proof, which is important because I've sweat all over this thing in the almost two years that I've owned it whenever I've carried it and I've not so much has put a drop of oil on the exterior, no rust. And bear in mind, guys, I'm in the South and we sweat all over our carry guns. Another thing that I like, I like the lower profile three dot sights. I love Hackathorn sights like you have in the Hellcat with that blacked out U-notch and that very attractive front night sight that is neon yellow. That's excellent on the Hellcat. However, the Hellcat sights do sit a little tall and I like these lower profile SIG P365 sights that are front and rear night sights, which is a lot more expensive. So you are looking at a little bit more value again with the SIG P365. So the trigger, the proven dependability, the sights, and the fact that I think this matches the Hellcat just about everywhere. That's why I'm gonna carry the SIG P365 over the Hellcat, even though the Hellcat gives you one additional round in functionally the same size. Right now, in an alternative universe, there is a James Reeves who is making a TFB TV video. And in this alternative universe, maybe it's a Hispanic James Reeves and his name is Himmy Rico or something like that. But he's making a video where he's saying, well, this is why I would carry the Springfield Hellcat instead of the SIG P365. And that's fine. What I'm trying to say in a really weird way is that if you decide to choose the Hellcat over the SIG P365, I understand. I mean, you get an extra round of capacity in a gun that's virtually the same size, and this is a well-featured gun. Right now, it's a little bit more expensive. In fact, around $100 more expensive street price, but that's gonna change whenever this thing hits the market again. I tried to look for reasons. I was trying to find reasons why the SIG P365 
was better than the Hellcat or why the Hellcat managed to stuff an extra round where the 365 couldn't. I was hoping dimensionally the guns were going to be off, but really they're not. So in my personal opinion, I like the Sig P365. Am I going to stand up in front of everybody, in front of all of YouTube and in front of my viewers and say that the Sig P365 is factually the better gun? In my opinion, I think it may be. But time will tell with the Springfield Hellcat, and I think it's an excellent pistol in its own right. So you can't go wrong with either of these. So I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Guys, we give away two, and it's about to be three guns every month. For every 500 supporters that we have on either Patreon or Subscribestar, we give away one gun a month. So right now we're almost at 1,500. That means we're almost at three guns a month. Please go and support us at patreon.com slash tfbtv or subscribestar.com slash tfbtv. And if you're a five or a ten dollar supporter, you are automatically entered into the drawing. No purchase necessary, of course. And these drawings have nothing to do with Subscribestar, Patreon, or YouTube. Now, if I had to choose between one or the other, I think Patreon is relatively anti-gun. They're allowing gun platforms to be on there, but you have to play by Patreon's rules. They even look at your content, and if there's something they don't like, they'll yeet you off of Patreon. So I would say go to Subscribestar, those guys are pro-gun. And as usual, thank you to our sponsor, Ventura Munitions. They are the best ammo store on the entire planet. Even if they weren't a sponsor, I'd still be buying ammo from them. You can get ammo by the quarter case, loose, made by Ventura Munitions, and it's cheaper than anything else out there, but better. Thank you to our viewers. If you appreciate the program, but you don't want to give us any money on Patreon or Subscribestar, which I understand, just do us a favor and hit subscribe. That doesn't cost you anything. And in fact, you can disable the notifications if you don't want to get annoyed by the multiple videos that we make a week. But at the end of the day, I'm just glad you're watching and I will see you next week. <laughs>